What's up, fuckers? It's tea time. Christ on a stick, y'all. It's been just a few short weeks since Vanilla Ice has stopped, collaborated, and listened to their cult leader and desecrated the nation's capital. Trump may be your shepherd, but he sure doesn't tend to his flock. None of you belligerent bitches got a pardon when he was throwing them out like paper towels to Puerto Ricans. But it was a very well thought out and premeditated attack, and the reviews are in. Most Americans gave it a rotten splat, while the Trump publicans gave it a certified fresh rating. Nothing like an attempted public execution of a few politicians to show that American pride. But now, what used to be the Republican law and order crowd wants to move forward without law and order. They think being held accountable for their actions isn't unity. I'm as confused as Rudy Giuliani applying hair dye. Isn't this the conservative Christian crowd? The GOP prides themselves on their belief in God and acting like Jesus. And they do act like Jesus, in the sense that neither one of them are Christians and they both hang out with prostitutes. But I guess they have forgotten how forgiveness worked. Jesus, the Messiah, was nailed to the cross so we could be forgiven for our sins. MAGA Jesus needs to be nailed to the fucking wall in court so we can even begin to forgive. That's unity to me. Without accountability, the Constitution they claim to love so much will mean nothing. Democracy is still at stake, but at this point, I think we all know this isn't about democracy, but pathocracy instead. Pathocracy is definitely a dating profile the Trumptillian creatures would swipe right on. Pathocracy is a government in which a small minority of people with personality disorders like psychopathy or narcissism takes control over a society of normal people. Power structures are built by such pathological actions as domination by white wealthy elite. Fair trade is bullshit. Deceptive messaging, hello Twitter, racism, blue lives matter, and hatred of immigrants. You can't spell hatred without red hat. Pathocracy is arguably one of the biggest problems in the history of the human race. Pathological regimes have cruelly manipulated their way to great power and caused massive human suffering through war, genocide, slavery, and poverty. Oh, sounds just like the recipe for America. And you don't even have to put her in the oven for cooking. Global warming's got you covered. But that's why we need to go green, but not Marjorie Taylor Green. She's ovary deep in the pathocracy lifestyle. She's an elite Karen that fell from Satan's sphincter and landed in Georgia's deep red 14th congressional district. She hates face masks, facts, and anyone who isn't Christian. So it must be super difficult representing places like Dalton, Georgia, knowing there are at least 10 synagogues, Buddhist temples, and several non-evangelical churches there. But she certainly does love harassing people who don't follow her personal religious beliefs, almost as much as she loves QAnon, Trump, and having dry, lifeless hair. You can always tell when a woman hates the gays. Honey, there's just something about your makeup that makes you look like the dried out hot dog at the gas station that didn't get bought at lunch. But we shouldn't single her out as a target for our Jewish space laser when there are plenty of others like Lauren Boebert. Just the thought of her gives me bloody diarrhea. Not literally though, but if for some reason you literally want bloody diarrhea, you could always eat at her restaurant. Just order the pork sliders. Or simply ask the dozens that she poisoned at a Colorado rodeo a few years ago. But these two loony ladies are not alone. Some people have so much ambition, there's no room left for empathy. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Senator Blood all over his hands, Prince Harming, Mr. Josh Hawley. He's, he's not here? Ugh. The man who tried to silence American voters is still on Twitter talking about being silenced. Well, dress me like a Yeti and call me Ted Cruz. There really is no rest for the wicked, is there? But speaking of obtuse Yetis, Ted Cruz is another we could throw into the pathocracy. He doesn't have a diagnosable condition, only because lacking benevolence isn't a medical condition. But riding the coattails of a pathological leader whose wicked deeds coincide with theirs definitely fits pathocracy. There are countless other lawmakers to be wary of, but as much as we Americans love to think we are unique, we aren't. There's plenty of other current pathocracies. Putin's Russia, Erdogan's Turkey, Duterte in the Philippines, and Mohammed bin Salman of Saudi Arabia. They all took pages out of German Chancellor Hitler's playbook, and that's what Trumpy Dumpty attempted to do as well, but he failed. The whole point of democracy is to try to protect the masses from a pathological minority. This was the whole fucking point of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. But it comes as no surprise the MAGA mob doesn't realize that, because the only thing they know about the Bill of Rights is guns. 
Gun-obsessed morons. No wonder they all love Lauren Boebert so much. She fits right in with the gun craze. A gun glued to her hip and a tantrum to follow anywhere she can't take her damn gun. Like the House floor. Do you know why we don't allow weapons on the Senate or House floor? Because of violent and pathological people like Lauren. Let's go back to the 1800s, which with all this damn violent behavior incited by the pathological politicians, doesn't feel too far away. Between 1830 and 1860, there were at least 70 violent incidents on the House and Senate floors, most of them prompted by Southerners. On May 22, 1856, a member of the House of Representatives entered the Senate chamber with a metal-topped cane and beat the bloody diarrhea out of a senator until he was unconscious. Jewish space laser would have been quicker. What do I know? This attack happened because a senator spoke out against extending slavery to other states. A racist white man attacking a progressive in a federal building? Guess we haven't come too far. History always seems to repeat itself, whether it's white supremacists being violent over progress or evil authoritarians thriving on pathocracy. That's why Trump being out of the White House shouldn't make you feel too relaxed. And to the move on, Trump's gone crowd, the only moving that needs to happen is you, moving out of the way. Out of the way of the people who are still fighting this fight that is nowhere near over. Trump may not be the leader of the country, but he's still the leader of a cult. A cult with lawmakers like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert. And there are up and coming villains like Shauna Bullock, a Phoenix area Republican who claims the election was rigged, except for the votes that she got. And she is going the extra mile by pushing a state law that would allow state legislators to overturn votes they don't like. 2024 isn't that far away. And unless Tangerine Palpatine is convicted, he can come back. Just like the real Palpatine did in The Rise of Skywalker. I'm telling you, there's no rest for the wicked. So there can be no rest for what is right. Now is not the time to bow out of this fight. I want everybody to have a great fucking day. Unless you're one of the move on Trump's gone bitches.